Good morning everyone, it's Yvonne here from the Aussie Goddess to do you what's cracking for Tuesday the 22nd of January. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you're new on board, welcome. Um, I'm having trouble waking up this morning. I don't do very well with sleep. I don't really seem to get a lot of deep sleep, which of course is what you need. But anyway... I'm here, in, <laughs> I'm here in person at the moment, just as well spirit does the talking, because I, I wouldn't be able to manage it. It's really funny. But anyway, that's me. Alrighty, I am using the, the Lima Tarot here, and I have the Six of Cups coming out. Now, I have a feeling this came out maybe a couple of days ago. Maybe it came out in one of the weekly reads. Um, the Six of Cups is a card that talks about, about nostalgia, about remembering the past or remembering times when you were a child going back to those times now I find this also comes up too when people have issues from childhood or they're working on their issues you often see it and it's funny because I watch readers sometimes talk about children and I think I can see why people talk about children because there are children on the card but I think that we forget sometimes that we're children too and we do carry some of the stuff with us from childhood that we need to work on. The other thing, of course, it can mean is that you're getting a visitor from the past or something from the past is coming back to pay you a visit. The other thing is this can also be past life stuff being dragged up for you too. So quite a lot of variations on that card, really. All the cards have lots of depth, but some of them more so than others. Okay, so we have the Wheel of Fortune coming out first. So now that makes me think something is definitely happening here. So the Wheel of Fortune talks of the universe flipping things in your favour. It's about the karmic wheel turning, karma, karma coming back in a good way, not in a bad way. So often this is a time, and it's very relevant at the moment with the Six of Cups there and the full moon last night, because the full moon we had... Um, the reason it was so powerful and so potent is because it's going to make a lot of us deal with past issues. So there is a real need for us at the moment to heal from the past so we can move forward with none of that baggage. Um, so the wheel also talks about the karma coming back here. And as I said, that's in a good sense. It's not so much anything else. Now, the hanged man is here and the hanged man is a card. Um, about taking time out to look at things from a different perspective. If sometimes this is looking at, you know, looking at something from someone else's perspective. Maybe you've become really sort of stuck in your own ideas and you need to sort of break out and have a look at things very differently. Now, sometimes we do this when someone's hurt or upset us. Um, it takes us into this space where, you know, we start to um, self-evaluate, I guess, is the best thing. Um you know, whether that can be after a relationship, after some sort of fight or argument with someone, or just sometimes when someone said something that sort of, you know, makes us think about things. It's not necessarily true. You know, it might be about their own problems, but we'll still investigate ourselves. Okay, so we have the Hierophant here. And the Hierophant is a card of tradition, um, very much a card of... Um, structure, organisation, things as they are in society. He also is the high priest, so it's very much about religion, but organised religion, structured religion, not the sort of religion we think of as spirituality. Um, this is very interesting, this reading, because I can already see where this is going here. Okay, Six of Wands coming out here. Now, Six of Wands is the card of victory. So this is beautiful. This is a card of public acclaim, um, being recognised for your efforts and being sort of brought out into the limelight, I guess, to, to be able to receive those accolades. Then we have the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups is a card that talks of not wanting another offer, being bored with the status quo, Sick and tired of doing the same thing over and over. Fitting beautifully with the reading here. The Queen of Pentacles coming out. So this can represent the Earth signs, Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo. She's a woman who's very grounded, very earthly. She's in touch with the material world. She likes her earthly pursuits. She is sometimes a little focused on her money, as are all the signs of the pentacles. That pentacle is very, very important to them. 
So this is about having some sort of focus here, really looking into something. Maybe you're reviewing how you make your money. She could be offering her pentacle too. Nine of Wands, this is about putting up boundaries, about protecting yourself, not in a physical sense either. Understanding your limits, understanding where other people's personal limits finish and you start. Making sure they know where your limits are and where they start. Because some people do not know their limits and they will trample all over yours. So sometimes when you're in a group of people and you say to people, you know, oh, I don't like it when someone else takes food off my plate without asking. And someone says, what's wrong with that? You've got a person who doesn't respect your boundaries right there. Because if you don't like food taken off your plate and people are taking it without asking you, it's like that in life. If you have a relationship where you say to people, I don't want, don't like it when you ring me after nine o'clock at night and the person still rings you after nine o'clock at night, they don't respect you. Bad start for a relationship. So we're talking about putting down boundaries and making sure people understand what you will and what you won't put up with. This is the Five of Pentacles. So we're talking about feeling a little low, feeling a little depressed, possibly feeling spiritually depleted. Um, it's about loneliness, feeling left out in the cold. This reading's telling a beautiful story here. This card's about destiny. It's about love, hope, faith being patient, waiting, divine timing, things being on your path, things being meant for you, things being brought to you. And here we have the Ten of Pentacles. So there's your abundance. This is a, you know, a, a money coming in. It's not just money, it's lots of other things too, but it's about the more tangible things in life. This is about material abundance. This can be an inheritance, it can be some sort of win, um, but definitely money coming your way. I love that it's got the world in the background here. So it's sort of like the world is yours. Okay, so main storyline coming out here. And it is about healing your childhood wounds. Something you are definitely dealing with an earth sign here. Um... Some of you have been working on issues relating to your childhood because I can see the Nine of Wands here. So it's about understanding with this Hierophant card, the things you've been taught in childhood, the structures you've maintained because you've been taught that's how life is. So often when I see the Boundaries card, I think, you know, a lot of parents will, um, you know, tell their children they shouldn't be mean to someone. You shouldn't be horrible to someone. So a person grows up thinking they shouldn't be horrible. So what happens is they accept all kinds of crap because they believe that what their parents told them is true and that they shouldn't be mean to anybody or nasty to anybody. So if someone's being nasty to you, ordinarily you would stick up for yourself. You would put boundaries in place. But if you've been taught always to be nice and kind, then you'll take that even when people are being horrible. So I know that's only a very brief example, but that's sort of what's happening in this reading here. Some of you have either tried to accept some sort of offer in the past um, for something. Now, whatever this was, and I see in the Four of Cups here, it didn't work out. Um, it didn't go well at all because of these boundaries. So for some of you, this could have been about you standing up for yourself here and saying, I'm not tolerating the way you treat me. So therefore, this offer that I've got here, I'm not giving to you anymore because I'm putting these boundaries in place. And if you can't respect me, I'd rather do without the offer. Thanks. Now, for some unknown reason, this feels very sad doing this because you're putting your boundaries down. But you have a choice here. Either you say I'm not putting up with that crap or you put up with someone's crap. That choice is yours. There's the free will all over it. If that's what you want, go for it. But if you want something in your life, you have to be prepared sometimes to say to people, that's not the shape I want it in. 
I don't want to be in a third party relationship. I don't want to be with you if you're going to still date other people. What I want is stability. I want to be able to live my life the way I see the, my life to be. I don't mind working with you on that to maybe bring it into line with what you want. But we are not living this life your way because that isn't that isn't sound. It's not healthy. That's toxic. So for some of you, I would imagine like all of us, you've gone into a relationship and kept making this um, provision for someone that wasn't healthy. So you keep making room for someone. So they push your boundaries a little bit more and then you make more room. So they push your boundaries a bit more and then you give them more. So they push your boundaries a bit more. And one day you wake up and you think this life's not my own. This life belongs to you. I'm really unhappy. And then you start to become resentful and angry and you start going at people for it. And they're like, what is wrong with you? In other words, I've been walking all over you for a long time and you haven't noticed it before. So why all of a sudden are you kicking up a fuss here? Now, what I want to say to you is through this process, you've been cycling. You've been cycling. You've been going round and round. You keep meeting the same person. They just have a different face. And you go back into the next relationship thinking, if I invest more, if I do more, if I'm more loving, if I'm more kind, this person will love me more. But it doesn't work that way. People love you when you put in your boundaries. People love you more when you have self-respect and you love yourself enough to say, that's enough. So what this is about here is you learning that this just makes you lonely. You just keep losing at this game because you don't love and respect yourself enough. And the universe is trying to bring this training in through this hanged man, through this four of cups, this dissatisfaction, through these offers you keep making to people and get nothing in return. And the universe is saying here, it is time. This is your destiny. This is your journey. You need to put your boundaries in so you're not feeling lonely and dissatisfied in life. The next time you make an offer, you learn to do this because there's victory here for you. You need to drop these things that you've learned in the past. You need to go back to your childhood and understand why you do this. Otherwise, you will keep cycling. You'll keep bringing it round and round and you'll keep saying, I wonder why this keeps happening to me. And this boundaries is why. Because you're not respecting yourself enough to say, I really love you, but I'm not putting up with that. That's not who I am. This is what I want. And you know, it's funny, isn't it? Because we're taught that that's selfish, but we let the other person be utterly selfish. Isn't that strange? That's childhood learning. Don't be selfish. Let the other person walk all over you. That's what you're here for. That's what your life is made of. So we just keep doing it because we think that's what we're supposed to do. And one day you wake up and you think, here I am. I'm really lonely. I have nobody here with me. I'm feeling left out in the cold. And that's what happens. You can't over love someone else more than you love yourself. Okay, how beautiful. And that's the card that came out for you. So that is card number three. Uh, to me, that's about self-love. It will be interesting to see what comes up in the book after I've been talking about self-love. <laughs> okay, it's called the chalice. And it says the chalice is a symbol of blessing, consecration and bliss. Whatever is placed within it is made sacred and, tra is made sacred and transfers that sanctity to those who drink from it. The blessed waters flow forth endlessly, symbolizing the wellspring of divine love. In ritual and magic, its primary elemental energy is water and its direction on the sacred circle is west. Drink deep from the vessel of life and love. Feel yourself connected to the waters of the world, one in har harmonious union with all beings. You are offered a chance to seek your bliss. Answer the call. That's exactly what the reading is about here. You have a chance to have true love. Don't deny yourself by letting the other person take all of the credit here. Have a wonderful day.